Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I just want to say first off, thank you to anyone and everyone that has seen my previous video, especially on the uh, New York Rangers and their current goaltending situation with having three goalies. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. Same with previous videos too, because it's really been hard for me, depending on what the topic is, for myself to really get out there because, you know, um, just not having the... Um, the right sources when people look up uh, videos on YouTube or just um, finding my stuff from external sources, whether it be Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, etc. But thank you all so much for the views. I really appreciate it. And I hope that this is only the beginning of a um, long term um, deal that I have here with doing YouTube videos for you all. So to continue, um, not about the Rangers, but since that blew up especially, I thought it only makes sense to start talking more about individual teams. And I've been wanting to talk about this team in particular for a while. And that is the Nashville Predators. Not just because of what's happened recently. And if you don't know, I'm sure you do. Um, Peter Laviolette, who's been the head coach of the Nashville Predators for numerous years now, was just um, fired yesterday. I mean, no, two days ago. Um, after a poor start that Nashville has had um, throughout the first half of the season. And then yesterday, they signed and then played their first game with their new head coach, John Hines. Now, to my belief, I think part of the reason that Hines was signed is because one of the assistants on um, the Predators coaching staff, I believe, was teammates with Hines in college. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but that's just a hunch that I'm assuming went into that. Because if you know David Poyle, the Predators GM, he is not one to fire guys midseason at all. He's only had, I believe, two or three head coaches um, under his belt since he first beca became GM of the Predators when they first came into ex existence in the expansion draft years ago for them. So overall, it is really interesting seeing what's happened with the Predators this season, but more importantly, just how disappointing of a season it has been for them and has really been shocking to myself and others, I'm sure. And that's why I really want to deep dive into today because Hines' his first game coaching with the Preds yesterday. They still get demolished by the Boston Bruins 6-2. to two. When you also have to add, the Bruins have really not been playing good hockey up until that point. They won four of their last 15 games. And were just gained um, the benefit of the doubt because a lot of their losses came in overtime and shootout. But overall, they haven't been playing good hockey. But neither has the Predators and really showed which two was going to get out of that slump. And so far, it's Boston. That's a team I will talk about another time, but with the Predators, wow. First off, they are currently sitting five points out of the second wildcard spot in the um, Western Conference with having 45 points in 42 games, including 19 wins, 16 losses, 7 overtime losses. This is truly alarming given the fact that last season, they they led the Central Division. They they were first in points, they had 100 points, and, and they, they had 47 wins last season. And they are doing dreadful this season. It is crazy to me because I would have never expected this from the Predators. I've talked about them in previous videos when I went over each team and what team I think is going to make the playoffs. And I said, oh, the Preds are going to get out of this funk. I made that video at least a month, a month and a half ago already. So what has been going on? And this is what we're going to find out. I'm going to get into as much statistics as I possibly can. And um, besides the goaltending, three key players that I think are underperforming that are part of their lack of success this season. So starting off, their goal leaders, um, Philip Forsberg is Philip Forsberg. He's still on pace to have 30 or so goals, which is good. Would expect a little bit more out of him, but he really hasn't been the problem. He leads the team with only 15 goals. That is part of the alarming thing that they don't have a lot of crazy good goal scorers, but at the same time, they are the, currently the sixth be best offense in the league. So goal scoring hasn't necessarily been the problem. Forsberg leads the team with 15. Then right behind him is Roman Yossi with 14, their captain, who is having a phenomenal season. Has, I believe, um, 45 or maybe more points now because they played yesterday in just over 40 games. So he's on pace now to be the Norris winner over Carlson just in points, which is ridiculous because given the start Carlson had, it seemed like a sure thing that no one was even going to get close to him. But Yossi's gaining points every single game. So that is great to see with him. And then third in the goal scoring is Nick Benino with 13, who has had a very strong uh, season thus far, but has cooled off as of late. Assist leaders, Roman Yossi, of course, with 31 assists. Right behind him, Ryan Ellis with 22, who is unfortunately out for who knows how long because he was concussed by a really bad hit by um, uh, Corey Perry in their Winter Classic game they had a couple days ago. So 
Hopefully, for Ellis' sake, he's back soon and that the concussion isn't something too long-term because obviously concussions can be a big problem for any player in the NHL and anyone in general. So, And then third in assists is Matthew Shane with 20, and I'm going to be talking more about him after this. And um, and points, point leaders, like I said, Roman Yossi, up until um, yesterday's game, I believe he had 45 points, Forsberg has 30, and Duchesne is third with 29. Duchesne, in my opinion... Needs to be playing better. He hasn't been terrible by any means, but given his contract and the amount of money he's making, I believe he's on a seven-year contract. I expect more from him. Um, maybe I'm expecting too much, but that's just my opinion, especially with how some other guys are underperforming. You really need those top guys to stay consistent, and he has been streaky throughout the season. So, And goalies, goaltending, a big part of their lack of success also. Pekka Rene, who has been the mainstay since this Predators team has basically started, has been fantastic throughout his career, but not this season. And in, um, in 26 games played, he has 14 wins, 9 losses, 3 overtime losses. Doesn't look too terrible, but he's averaging th- um, 3.06 goals allowed a game, and his save percentage is 894, so that isn't good. And UC Soros, their backup, who's supposed to be the next man up to Rene, and once Rene retires or is just done with the team in general... He's having a terrible season. Um, Sorrows in 21 games played has five wins, seven losses, four overtime losses. Goals allowed average game is um, 3.25 and a save percentage of 8.92. Yeesh. Now, my question was, how much is this on the goaltending? Obviously, the goalies are really underperforming, but the bigger picture here is their defense. They're currently the first worst, uh, the fourth worst defense in the NHL. They are also tied for third worst in penalty kill with um, having a penalty kill percentage of 74%. That is terrible. And they have a goals allowed average game of 3.4. So they're giving up the goals and they're not having the goaltending to back them up. Those two things are keys to not having a good season whatsoever. So that is really alarming. The Predators definitely need to make moves to shake up this team, in my opinion, if they want any chance making the playoffs they are currently five points out it's not impossible by any means but they need to get on a run they need to fix this defense and with ryan ellis out especially and who knows how long if it is long term they really need to make a move to get a solid defenseman in my opinion even if that takes giving up um uh, some decent prospects they have Uh, a guy like eli tolvin and comes to mind because this is the predators window to win now So what is more important? Is it their future or is it now? In my opinion, with having Rene, with having the veterans they have on the team, it is now. But let's talk about three guys who are really underperforming, in my opinion. Starting with Ryan Johansson. Ryan Johansson, in my opinion, has been a very solid um, top six center in the league since he first came in. But since he's been traded over to the Nashville Predators, he's kind of been up and down. It seems like he has a solid season. That battle like will get 60 plus points and next season won't do so much. He hasn't hit his career high since um, his last season with Columbus years ago, which I believe he had over 70 points that season. But currently, he has 9 goals, 17 assists in 26 games. Obviously, he's been dealing with injuries, but um, I'm sorry, 26 points in 42 games. So he hasn't been dealing with many injuries and is currently on pace for at least a 10-point drop from the season before where he had um, had over 50 points. And I think... I'm trying to think. He hit hit 64 points last season? I could be wrong. But regardless, he's dropping at least 10 points from the previous season. That is alarming. That is a big deal, especially for this team that um, needs consistency on both ends. And Johansson um, is a solid two-way center, but they also need him to pick up the pace um, points-wise, especially if this defense continues to play the way it has. They need to have a good enough offense to make up for it on a nightly basis. And while their offense hasn't been bad, it hasn't necessarily been good enough either. Um, Victor Arvidsson is a big one, in my opinion. He he has been hurt this season. He's only played 30 games, so he's missed a little bit over 10. But in 30 games, he only has 9 goals, 9 assists for 18 points. Last season, in 58 games, 58, he had 34 goals, 14 assists for 48 points. Just think about that. Arvidsson was a guy that had myself included, and many others thinking he could possibly be a 50-goal scorer, and he has had a terrible season. Obviously, the points doesn't seem too terrible, but given his standards and the fact that he only he didn't even play 60 games last year and had over 30 goals. So that is a big problem the Predators are having as well, a guy like him underperforming as much as he has, a guy that they really need, 
have needed to bank on, and he has been there in years prior. What is the ceiling for him? Is the injuries a big part of the reason why he isn't playing to his potential? I don't know, but that is something that definitely needs to get fixed because that is only going to make things worse for this Predators team's uh, team if he cannot pick up the goal scoring like he has in years prior. And the third player I had on this list, the most alarming, is Mikel Granlin. Granlin, if you don't know, came over in a trade um, around the deadline last season with the Minnesota Wild, with Kevin Fiala going the other way. Fiala has done just fine with Minnesota. He has, I believe, in, um, in easily over 50 games, uh, maybe closer to 60, I could be wrong. He has 32 to 34 points, which really isn't bad at all, given his role on the team. And then you look at um, Granlin, who has plenty of pieces around him. This season, in, in uh, 36 games played, he only has 7 goals and 8 assists for 15 points. He has only had 20 points in his 52 games played with Predators since coming over in the trade last season. Then you look at what he did before he was traded with Minnesota. In 63 games last season, up until he got traded, he had 49 points. And then the season prior, he had close to 70 points. And then the season before that, he had close to 70 points. He has hit the 65-plus um, point mark multiple times in his career and has just been a flat-out embarrassment to this Nashville Predators team. That trade is looking completely lopsided when at the time it seemed the opposite. It seemed that the Predators were getting the better player of the two by far, but Fiala is thriving while um, Granlin has has never p picked up the pace since coming to this Predators team. So that is a huge problem. If they can get rid of him, great, but the problem is he doesn't really have much value now either, and he is on a sizable contract. So I don't know what is going to happen with Granlin, but he is a big problem for this Predators team, along with the defense and the goaltending, obviously. But guys like him, especially who came in, Predators probably thinking at the time that, the, wow, that's a steal. We'll take a guy upwards of 60-plus points um, going, in that, going into last season, and he does nothing for them. He has not contributed much in any fashion, and it just seems that he is never going to fit with this Nashville Predators team, even with the new coaching staff they have, because I don't think John Hines is anything to be excited about either you know he wasn't terrible in the beginning with the devils but he's never been fantastic they had that one playoff run okay cool but what else what else is there i just in my opinion this team needs a complete shake up i think that there's too many guys on offense that aren't clicking as much as they should be and defensively while they have been doing great in points like i said roman yossi has been fantastic in the point column ryan ellis at home they have all been putting up the points too but overall, as a defense, they are one of the worst in the league. The only teams below them are bottom feeders going nowhere this season with the likes of Ottawa, Detroit, Canes, etc. So having Nashville that low in goaltending and defense is just a recipe for disaster. So I hope for their, their sake, things get better. But like I said, things definitely need to get shaken up because nothing is looking good if you're a Nashville Predators fan right now. And you their window, I don't know how big it is. Can they retool without rebuilding? Sure, but will that be good enough? I don't know what return they would get. Like I said, David Poyle, in my opinion, is one of the best GMs in the league. He's fantastic at drafting, but he also needs to make sure that he doesn't get too attached with certain players and relationships on the coaching staff because it makes you think if Peter Laviolette was fired earlier in the season, could things be different now? So. Let me know what you guys think. I just want to throw this out there because I want to be talking about more individual teams, given in part because of the amount of success I've had in my last video. It's been my best video up to date. So again, to anyone, thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, please go check them out. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I would, I would really appreciate it. And I'm going to be posting NHL content consistently about a variety of different things in the NHL. And like I said, I'm going to probably be continuing to pace of talking more about individual teams as it seems that that is the best route to go right now. So once again, thank you all so much. And I should be back in either tomorrow, uh, later today, or in a couple days. Really not sure. But as long as I have the free time, I'm going to make the content as soon as I can and bring it out to all of you. So thanks so much, and I'll be back.